This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, like uh, we'll start now. So yesterday we have discussed about like virtualization and types of hypervisors. Okay. And like we discussed the basics about like what is cloud computing, right? So today we'll discuss about like what are the different types. Okay. Or different uh, service models in the cloud. Okay. So actually if you consider any like on-premises network okay if you consider any on-premises network right first you will be having something like a networking and your uh, like a team network team will be laying some network okay and after that you will be having the storage and later servers on top of it right then you will be having some bmv or zen or whatever you will be having some virtualization once on this environment your admins will spin the os and on top of it right you will be having some middleware or runtime runtime in the sense your java dot net or whatever okay and you will be having something like data and applications everything will be installed and maintained by your team okay but when it comes to the infrastructure as a service what happens right the networking storage and servers and virtualization right these all components will be maintained by the vendor managers vendor manager in the sense like cloud providers so you will be responsible for uh, installing the OS, middleware, runtime, data, and applications. So, in infrastructure as a service, right? They will provide only the bare networking and storage and virtualization. On top of it, right? You will be responsible for creating the applications and runtimes. Whereas, when it comes to platform as a service, what uh, you will be responsible for running only the applications and data okay and rest all the components like runtime middleware operating systems virtualizations uh, servers and storage and networking will be provided by the cloud vendor got it so like if you take uh, uh, like uh, there are like multiple service providers right it's like we will have uh, azure aws right so you like uh, uh, for infrastructure as a service, right? Most of the companies use AWS. For uh, platform as a service, right? So they will go for this. Sorry, uh, Azure. For platform as a service, people will opt for like uh, Azure. Whereas infrastructure as a service, they will go for the AWS. But both will support. Got it? Because they will be having some runtime plugins and subscriptions as part of the platform as a service okay whereas there is one more model called as software as a service when it comes to software as a service right everything will be maintained by the uh, cloud vendor only like networking storage servers virtualization operating systems middleware runtime and data and application so if you see everything is maintained by the provider so your job is just to use it we'll see some examples so if you take infrastructure as a service right it would it basically delivers the infrastructure okay like storage server processor and ram okay the supported enterprise uh, examples are rackspace aws azure and gpc when it comes to platform as a service it is also like uh, you will be having extra like runtime on top of it on the infrastructure okay you will have some elastic bean stack windows azure apache openshift okay these are the service providers when it comes to software as a service you have this dropbox cisco webex go to meeting and like gmail and these are all the software as a service just to log in and use the underlying infrastructure is maintained by the cloud provider okay and there is something like uh, container as a service and network as a service so it is basically to write and uh, the microservice is there right so 
it is basically to write code and deploy whereas when it comes to the network as a service so like they will be providing the uh, uh network as an infrastructure let us assume like there is one of uh, one office in us and one office in india okay so they should be connected via a secured channel okay so they should be connected via a secured channel so this networking as a service provider will enable a secure tunnel between those two offices okay so that is a network as a service <coughs> So why, what are the advantages of the cloud computing? So basically, right, there are two types of expenses. One is like capital expense and the variable expense. Capital expenses is the like initial expenditure, what you have to spend, like in order to procure your uh, routers, okay, in order to procure the storage, infrastructure, and all those things. Variable cost is in order to maintain those physical infrastructure, we will be spending something okay so those are called as the variable when it comes to cloud computing there is no capital expense just you pay for what you use okay and economics of scale because as there is no capital expenditure right you can as you only pay to like uh, you only play what you use right so you can easily scale let us assume like yeah, i'm having some thousand dollars okay but I uh, like I'm having some ten thousand dollars. I'm setting up a one company. Okay, with ten thousand dollars, right? I won't get any like hardware itself. Whereas if I go to some a cloud provider, I can get some bunch of servers at least for three or four months. Okay, to so at least I can do some POCs and go into production, right? So that is the economic scale. As and stop guessing capacity. So as everything is is made available, right, ready made. So we don't need to bother about the capacity. Let us assume like you are start, you are having one company, and at the third year you are doubling the capacity. The infrastructure or the load is doubled. Then you have to, if it is in a physical data center, you have to procure all the infrastructure, and it takes a lot of time, right? So, but in cloud, right, we can directly spin an instance within minutes. If you want some, if you want to increase your infrastructure, right, you can just select that option and you can spin that infrastructure. This enables like my deployment to go live in minutes. Okay, and you don't need to spend the maintenance cost for data center, running the data center. And what are the disadvantages? So downtime. One is this is one of the problem like actually amazon will support around like 99.99 percent availability so like uh, per year it, it is supposed to uh, like uh, have a downtime of around like eight minutes or something but but let us assume on a critical day on a critical day of a thanksgiving day if it goes down for around like 10 or 15 minutes right we are not sure right what will happen? the business will be in loss and last year also we had last month or last week we had some downtime from aws where one region went northern virginia went to down for three hours or something okay and security and privacy as a customer right i am putting i am spinning my instances in the cloud correct so i am not sure my data is secured because i am not maintaining that right if it is a financial application where the like, credit card information or something is being stored over there, then we are not sure. It is a tr based on the trust, but no one is going to see and verify it, right? And vulnerability to attack. And uh, one more thing is like, as this is a shared service that AWS will provide instances or machines to multiple people okay they will have their security measures but still like we'll have some vulnerable uh, problem of like vulnerability to attack okay and next thing is like limited control and flexibility so let us assume like i'm deploying a db server i'm installing my rkill server in my premises so i can modify the configuration based on my need Okay, make, I can change my uh, like uh, configuration files of the Oracle. 
okay but when it goes to cloud now what will happen right you will be just provided with the username and password for providing in, like logging into that machine so you won't have any you can't even log into the os and modify the configuration files so you won't have control full control on the system just you will use it as a service like how you use your google docs or something like that right even the oracle right they will provide you the username password for logging into the system only those details you will have but underlined infrastructure and uh, maintenance job will be done by the aws itself okay and vendor locking let us assume like now we are having multiple providers but in like some five, seven years or eight years back right aws is only the leader okay in the market so during that time as the number of customer base increases right you have what will happen there may be a chance like uh, that aws may increase the the cloud provider may increase the uh, cost right due to which right if there is already a production server right they can't move away that is the vendor locking once you go to him right you will be locked over there and let us assume if the increases the one is the cost concerns cost concerns is something like suddenly if aws feels like if they want to increase the like cloud provider wants to increase the uh, like per hour charge so you have to bear it there is no other go so what is aws basically so aws in simple layman terms it is also one of the like cloud provider okay who offers like compute power uh, compute and database storage as well as the content delivery and other features okay so actually what i will can i create an account for aws for free yes for one year the aws account is free you can create an account but you can't use all the services in aws so how i will log into my aws so console.aws.amazon.com okay just a second this will log me into the aws else we can give right aws.amazon.com okay my home page will be opened okay i have to click on the sign in to console then it will be redirected into console.amazon.com and the landing page would be here okay first i can create a free tier account for that right first i have to click on a create a new aws account here i will be providing my email id i will give something like and here aws account name this is the name that uh, this account will hold this name basically okay this is the parent account name so i will give like isha test 68 okay so here if you see right we will get 12 months one year free free tier access and this includes like ec2 instance s3 and dynamo db okay so if you want to know like what you will get as part of aws for free right i can go to this link so here they will provide you like what are the uh, what you will get for free like 750 hours of ec2 instance means you can spin some t2 micro for 750 hours means like approximately two hours a day okay and you will be getting 5 gb of the s3 
okay and amazon rds right you can spin some uh, uh, db for around like 750 hours which includes uh, like mysql postgresql marina db and oracle and sql server and uh, actually uh, like oracle is like br bring your own server okay so mostly right you will be spinning for mysql only and uh, like lambda you can execute some around like 1 million uh, executions for code executions for free something like that you will have uh, the detail uh, the details you will find over here and i have put the same in the slide slide also okay first i have to click on the continue now it will be asking me two options one is like whether i am creating a professional account uh, or a personal account professional in the sense like is it for a business purpose okay and i have to give my company name and i will be giving some i will give some number okay and i'm selecting my country something like flat one okay i will be providing the state details okay and i will choose some. i will check and i will click on the create account and basically right you it will you have to have a credit card in order to create a aws account why you need to have a credit card means here aws is providing these services for free correct and there will be some other uh, services which are paid okay so what amazon will do right if you consume any other services apart from this right automatically you will be charged and the money will be deducted monthly from your credit card okay that's why you have to provide your credit card details and click on verify and add such that your account will be created okay i'm not going to do this one you whenever you create your personal accounts right you can do it over there Okay, I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to, just you have to give your credit card details and click verify and add. Some one rupee will be deducted. Okay, and uh, your account will be created. Got it? Any doubts still now? Okay, I assume like okay. So if once I created my account, right? If I want to log in, I'll be using aws.amazon.com. Okay, and I will be clicking on AWS Management Console. I'll be clicking this one. Here I have to provide the email address, root email address, which I'm, which with which I have created my account, and I have to click next. Here I will be providing the password. Okay. Now I have logged into the AWS account. Actually, when you see there is one thing called all services, right? So these are the services that are being provided by the AWS. So if you see, right, Amazon has provided some like 750 hours of EC2. Let us assume like if you use other services, right, then you will be charged. Okay, when you come to database, right, they are providing in some 750 hours of the database. Let us assume like if and 5 GB for S3 bucket. 
if you consume more than 5 GB, you will be charged. And there are some other services which are not paid. Got it? So if you consume these services, you will be charged. Once you log into your account, at the right corner, you will be having something like this. This is your account number. This is will be unique. Okay. So uh, this significance I will tell you in future classes, but you have to make sure like or whenever you log in, this is the unique ID. This is the account number for your account. Okay. And when I go to there is one thing called like my building dashboard. If I click on this one, right, then you will be able to see as it actually I will be using this uh, some non not like uh, some services which are not free. So I'm charged around like 100 rupees or something. But for you guys, right, if you use EC2 and RDBMS, whatever are free, right, you won't be charged. Okay. So here this is in my billing dashboard, I will be able to see the bills. Got it. And there will be something like budgets. So let us assume like I have created my account. Okay. And I added my credit card. So you will be scared like like some money will be detected like without intimation or something. So there is something called like a, we can manage create and manage budgets. If you create a budget, what will happen? Right. We can set it threshold limit like let us assume like ten dollars or hundred dollars okay so a notification will be sent to you if that cutoff reaches let us assume uh, i'm creating a cost budget okay i have to the basically idea is like if any like if you put some threshold like ten dollars or something right if that amount breaches right you will be getting one mail that is the basic idea got it now I have to click on set your budget. Okay, I will be giving some name like AWS. Billing and what is how I have to I want monthly expense to I should get a mail every month if my budget exceeds more than some $10. Okay. So here there is our something like budget amount. So I have to put some $10 last month. I was charged around 2.15, but I'm putting my threshold as some $10. Okay, there are like two things like if you want to put, to put it as fixed right every month. If it exceeds some $10, you will get else right month monthly budget planning is also there where in which you have to put your limits for every month. I'm not going to do this one, but I will be using only fixed okay and at the end right i'm having I, I will be clicking on the configure thresholds okay now i have set my threshold as something like 10 so when you should get an alert means alert means something like when you should get a email whether it is like uh, 100 percent when my budget reaches 100% means when my bill is around $10 or if I put it as something like 80 80% then I will be getting a an email when my budget is around like $8. Okay, so currently I'm putting as something like 100. Okay. If my threshold is I have configured my threshold as ten dollars. No, I want to get an alert when I consume complete ten dollars. And here, right, I have to provide my email. And confirm budget. So. I will just review it. So name is AWS billing and it the period is every month and it starts from December 1st. Okay, there is no end date for that. I haven't configured any end date and the budget amount is is like around like $10 and if I click on create 
this is like uh, three folds if it reaches 100 percent means if it crosses 10 dollars an email will be sent yeah now i have created an alert to notify the customer like if it breaches any threshold amount a mail will be sent such that you can keep track of your budget okay and you you will have another like if you when you click on the billing you will have something like bills in bills right out of my 1.12 dollar which i paid last month right it will show me the service which is which, which is service for which service i got billed okay if you expand this one for me it is like 0 0.55 dollar i paid for elastic cloud compute in elastic cloud compute in which region in this northern virginia region what i have done here if you see right i have used an elastic ip address okay so elastic ip for for the first one hour is free okay so there won't be any charges but unfortunately i have forgot to delete that okay to release that elastic ip i have forgotten to release the ip i was charged around 0 0.05 dollars per one hour so i have used it for around like one 110 hours that's why i'm charged 0 0.55 dollars okay got it and second thing is i have charged i have been charged for using the relational database service if i expand in which region in asia pacific why i was charged i was charged per one month because i have backed up something okay which is exceeding the allocation so i was charged some 0 0.07 dollars and for rest of the services i was not charged okay i will be charged for one more service that is s3 okay for route 53 i have used it and i will be charged okay so like that you can understand like you let us assume like you get a bill also you can understand like where which component is consuming and you can go and you can fix that you can delete that okay by seeing this bill da billing dashboard you, you will co come to an understanding like okay here i have after seeing this right i have released my i have deleted my elastic ip clear this is how you have to analyze the billing dashboard So there is one option over here, which is like services. Currently, right, we'll be discussing on the compute. I'll be clicking on the EC2. This one we have discussed yesterday itself. And we'll see, before this, right, we'll see something like the region. So currently you, you know right the cloud provider is hosting your instances that everyone knows. So where he will host those actually he will be putting his data centers or placing the data centers across multiple geographical locations like India, US, UK. Why he need to put it that corresponding in like India because if I have my data center in India, right? My latency will be very less. If I deploy my application, okay, in India, the Indian consumers will get less latency. Okay, so what you will have, the performance will be good. So normally, right, in a, a cloud provider will have multiple data centers. Okay, let us assume this is like DC1. data center one or like I will put it as DC one. This is the data center. Okay. 
data center. This is a data center and this is a data center. Okay, like that you will have multiple data centers. The presence will be across globe means it will be spanned across multiple countries. Okay, so how Amazon will group these data centers, right? They will group based on the location. Let us assume like they will club these multiple data centers. Okay, which are present in one location and like let us assume like they are present in India. Okay, they will group them. Logically, they will group them and this is called as a region basically. Okay, and if it is present in like If the data centers are present in US, right, then we'll call them as some In US also we will have multiple regions, but for now, right, these are present in US Okay and this one we'll call as us region if it is present in europe then we will call as a europe region got it so there is a concept called like what is a region and availability zone so availability zone is nothing but the data center availability zone is nothing but it is a physical data center okay so one region may have two or more data centers okay each data center is called as an availability zone in cloud terminology and this geographical presence of one one vendor right like whether it can be like azure or like aws right that is called as an region okay if you go to the next slide so what is a region basically AWS geographical regions like Asia Pacific or EU East or EU West or these are called these are the physical locations Okay, these are called basically as a regions which are having like Some cluster of data centers. Okay, so It is a group of region is nothing but a group of data centers pertaining to some region to some country or some physical location okay currently there are around like 24 regions in aws okay the same thing availability zone is nothing but a distinct data center okay and you, you for one region you can have minimum of two data centers or maximum of six data centers usually it would be like three so in you won't call as the data center in cloud you will call it as an availability zone so why you will have availability zone is let us assume like you are hosting some application in cloud in one region in india okay and you should have it if you have multiple availability zones okay let us assume like i am hosting actually here i am having some three or four data centers if let us assume like if this data center goes down Okay, this data center goes down. Okay, this and this other two, three data centers should be able to cope up with my load and there wouldn't be any interruption. Let us assume if I had a downtime here also, then other two data centers will be supporting my load, will be sharing the load. Okay, that's why you will be having multiple availability zones. Okay, currently there are around like 77 availability zones. Okay, and these availability zones or these data centers will be like uh, will be having like uh, high high bandwidth and low latency. 
network okay so they can communicate with high bandwidth and low latency there there won't be much latency between these availability zones and every data center okay in terms of let us assume like they won't share the resources common resources common resource in the sense power grid or isp internet server pro service provider or infrastructure why because let us assume like these two data centers are using the same power grid let us assume if this power grid fails by any chance my two data centers will be gone yes or no so they will make sure like everything uh, like power grid like internet and everything will be different channel and different uh, vendor or it will be like so dedicated lines okay So in your AWS console, here you will be able to see the regions. Okay, these are like multiple regions. Okay, this is like in US, right? You are having some four regions: one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is the name which you will call. The right side you are having, right? US East One. This represents US Northern Virginia region. Okay, if you go to AP. Hyphen South Hyphen One, right? It represents Mumbai region. So the actual name will be present over here. So this is for our human readable format. But in AWS, right? You will be mentioned. You won't mention like something like AP specific Mumbai. You will be mentioning. You will be identifying the region with this name, not with Asia Pacific Mumbai. Okay, this is the. Name which you have to use for the AWS services while creating an instance or something like that. Okay, if you want to communicate with other instance, you have to let us assume like if I want to uh, send it, uh, create an instance or establish a channel from this region to this region. Okay, I should not specify Asia specific Mumbai. I should specify destination would be something like AP South one. Okay, and okay. Now, if I click on launch instance, so now you have seen what is region, where you can find the region, where you will know like how many, uh, what to say, how many availability zones does this region have? When you click on launch instance, for now you will leave, I will show just to give me a second, okay. Here you are having subnets, right? In this page, you are having subnets. Okay, these are called as the availability zones. Here you can see for that region how many availability zones you have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this region, Northern Virginia region, is having around like six availability zones. If I switch to some other region, okay. Mean. I'm switching to this one. Okay. Let's see like. Uh, okay, I will switch to some other reason basically. I don't want to go there. I'll go to some other region like Mumbai. If I click on launch instance, let's see like how many regions does this Mumbai region have? Availability zones. See here one, two, three. Mumbai is having only three availability zones. Okay, so each thing would be a distinct data center. Got it? So subnet will have this uh, 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 availability zones. Okay, 
I will switch back to Northern Virginia. So in the left side, right, you will be having some instances, okay? So whenever you click instances, right, you will be see, able to see like how many instances are running, okay? Like um, before this, right, we'll go to this slide. Let's see. One second. What is an EC2? Currently, right, you have, you know what is region? Okay, well, you know what is region and what is availability zone. Okay, so now we will see like what is EC2. EC2 is a web service that provides the compute, uh, compute uh, capacity in the cloud. Means EC2 is nothing but a simple virtual machine. Okay, likewise how you spin your in your VMware, right? EC2 is a service that will spin one instance or one virtual machine or one OS to you. Okay. Uh, you can uh, you can get around like 20 we can spin around like 20 virtual machines at once per account okay so actually you can access the ec2 instances in three ways one is using this uh, management console management console is something like this one from web ui and there will be something like Command line access also. Command line access also you can have. Okay, you will be in you know, your future classes. We will use. I will show you like uh, how you will access the AWS from command line. Okay. Oh, and yeah. AWS... Hello. Yeah, please. Yeah, excuse me. The second point I am not able to understand that the virtual server. No, you are told that it is spinning twenty. Yeah. Or it... So. Yeah. So if you see this one, right? So normally, normally in a virtualization hypervisor, how you will have, you will have, okay, I will take this notepad or oh, this would be better. Previously, you know, we used to have one dedicated hardware, like something like a physical box. To install any application we used to buy one uh, physical one server okay in on top of it you will be installing the software when we went when we moved to this virtualization right you will buy one good capacity physical box on top of it right we will be installing one hypervisor okay here we will be having some good capacity like uh, some some 24 GB RAM or like 512 GB RAM and some 700 cores. Okay, and you will be having some 500 TB. You will have a physical machine of this size. On top of it, right, we will be installing something like a hypervisor which enables the virtualization okay on top of it right you will be installing your operating systems okay like it can be linux or windows right you will install these many it can be linux windows mac okay windows 10 so these are called as like virtual machines so in aws also they will be having some good configuration they will be having many physical uh, servers on top of it right they will be installing the zen server 
Zen is the virtualization they use. On top of it, right, they will be spinning these instances. And this is called as the guest operating system, or you will, whenever you request for Linux, right, you will be created a Linux instance. This is called an instance. Clear? Okay. So whenever I click, uh, whenever I create an instance, right? Normally that is going to happen in the backend. On an hypervisor, they will spin one instance and they will assign some public IP and they will give that to you. So whether we can use Linux or whatever OS we can use or it is or... Actually, there will be, uh, here if I click on launch instances, right? Okay. Here, I am having like multiple instances like I will be having like uh, this is the proprietary Linux okay of Amazon okay and you will be having Mac and you will be having the Red Hat and you will be having SUSE Linux like that you are having so many like there are like around like 41 AMIs AMI is nothing but Amazon machine image so if you want Windows you have Windows okay if you want to search for Windows or if I want to search for Linux, I have three variants of, uh, sorry, yeah, here four. I have some variants like Red Hat, proprietary like Amazon Linux and SUSE Linux. Okay, I am not having this sent OS and all those. Got it? Okay. And there will be like, if you want to access for free, right, there will be one tag called like free tire eligible. Mm. So if you use this free tier eligible, right, you won't be charged. If you use these things, right, deep learning, Amazon AMI image or something, right, you will be charged. So you have to make sure, like, you have to see whenever you spin and select an instance, you should select free tier eligible. So there is one checkbox over here, which is like free tier only. If I select free tier only, right, I will be provided with the only free tier eligible instances. Spin instance, you are telling that uh, selecting, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so okay. like tomorrow we will see like how to create an uh, and like today we have seen like how to create an account, right? Uh, today you just create an account. Tomorrow we'll discuss on like uh, uh, what is the CC2 and how to create and how to log into those machines. Okay. That's it for today. Like if you have any doubts, I will answer. With that uh, cloud computing calculation and all uh, that uh, letter will come or how would that? Can you come again? That uh, cloud computing, how we have to do that? And how we have to do that like that? Is it in topic? Cloud computing? I didn't yeah. understand. Like, cost estimation or like what you are asking? No, you, uh, we want to do that uh, cloud computing calculation, correct? How to do cloud com uh, computing? Yeah, this is part of the course. How to log in, how to create instances, and the services, everything will be covered. Okay. So the. Oh, wait, uh, is the uh, yes, go ahead.